years old. I threw my mother-in-law and husband out of my house because they decided to play with me without knowing who the house actually belonged to. My husband, Ned, and I met through a dating app. I had been focusing on my career ever since I graduated college, so I never really took any time to pursue romantic relationships. When I had finally become financially stable enough to own and furnish my own house, I knew that I was ready to be in a relationship. When I met Ned, he was very candid about the fact that he had just gotten a divorce from his long-term wife. He had been with his wife since his senior year of high school, but they got divorced because they were just different people. I didn't mind this because I kind of expected to be dating divorcees since I was in my 30s. Ned and I got along really well. He made me feel great and I looked forward to spending time with him. I think we dated for about six months before we introduced each other to our parents. We only had our mothers and while my mother was happy that I was finally putting myself out there so she accepted Ned wholeheartedly. I could not say the same for Ned's mother Hannah. She made her dislike me for very clear since the first day she met me. She told me not to hold out too much hope because I was just a temporary distraction for Ned. She told me that Ned and his ex Stacy were meant for each other and that I would soon be kicked to the curb for Stacy. It bothered me, but when I tried to talk to Ned about it, hoping that he would be able to tell his mother to stop, he just brushed me off and told me to deal with it. I should have run away at that point, but I found myself too attached and in love with him to do that. About a year and a half of dating, we decided to get married. We eloped because neither of us wanted a ceremony. My mom was fine with it, and in fact, she was just happy that I settled down. Hannah, on the other hand, was furious. She once even accused me of breaking Ned and Stacy apart. Ned remained silent always, and I wasn't one to confront anyone, so I just silently took all of Hannah's lashing. About a year into my marriage with Ned, Hannah had developed alopecia, which is the condition that affects your hair follicles, and then causes one to lose their hair. She had a milder form of it, which meant it was very much treatable. Hannah lived a good two hours away from the hospital that did these treatments, while we only lived a half an hour away. She approached Ned about moving in with us, and he just told her yes. Now, I'm not one to deny someone who is in medical need, but it still irritated me that Ned went and made a decision behind my back. Especially a huge and uncertain decision regarding his mother, whom he knows I have a rocky relationship. I made sure he knew how I felt. How could you possibly make a decision like that behind my back? She's my mother. Do you think I'd just ignore her needs? Especially when I know she needs those treatments? I'm not heartless, Ned. I would have said yes. Then why are we talking about this? I still made the right decision. But I don't like that you decided without asking me. Regardless of my answer, you should have told me. I don't see what the problem is here. You would have said yes anyways. Besides, it's my mother. I think I have even more of a right to decide what's to be done when it comes to her. Exactly. It's your mother. Are you forgetting that she has a problem with me? She never liked me, and she keeps comparing me to your ex. It's just a short time she'll be here. Get over it. You don't even side with me whenever she says or does something mean to me. The very least you could do right now is apologize for not asking me how I felt about your mother moving in. Stop being a baby for heaven's sake. Cass, I'm tired of you constantly talking about my mom that way. You know who never did that? Stacy. Oh, wow. Okay. No, 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 no. I, I didn't mean that. Save it. I was seeing red. It was one thing for Hannah to keep doing that, but for Ned to also compare me to his ex? No. I couldn't deal with that. I went into our room and I threw a bunch of his stuff for the night out and locked myself in. I didn't want to see his face or hear anything he had to say. I spent the night just crying. I mean, it hurts when your spouse compares you to the person right before you. I knew that I should have given our relationship some time before letting it advance to marriage, but I really did love Ned. I hoped he loved me too, and when he told me he did, we got married. I somehow fell asleep that night. When I woke up, it was time for me to go to work. I got ready and walked out. On my way out, I saw Ned sleeping on the couch and my heart hurt a little. I decided then that if Ned came up to me and apologized, I'd hear him out. I had a really weak spot for him. After I got back home, Ned was still there. He had skipped work and he looked kind of miserable. 
A part of me hoped that it was because he felt really bad about what he had said to me. When I walked through the living room, Ned immediately walked up to me and began apologizing a lot. I had to ask him to calm down. He gathered his thoughts and began to tell me about how much he loved me and he didn't mean anything that he said yesterday. He explained that he was just frustrated about his mother's condition and felt like I didn't care because I was focusing on a trivial matter. I did want to tell him that it wasn't trivial matter when his mother absolutely hated my guts, but I knew that it would lead to another argument, so I just let it go. And I told him everything was okay. I understood where he was coming from because if one of my parents had developed a medical condition, I too would have been going a little crazy from worry and stress. But then again, I would never treat my partner the way Ned treated me. I battled with my thoughts for a while. I felt upset and mad, but at the same time, I felt like I lost my chance to speak with Ned even more about my feelings. But again, at the same time, it felt like Ned was just never listening to anything that I said. If it felt even a little bit like an attack on him, I knew that he would not hesitate to say something hurtful. A week after our fight, Hannah moved in. She greeted Ned with a lot of enthusiasm. She kept talking to him and asking him how he was. She quite literally walked past me and ignored me. It was humiliating because I was sure that Ned saw what his mother was doing, but he just remained silent about it. During the conversation, at some point, Ned got up to keep Hannah's things in her room and fix her a drink. I was left alone with her. She finally turned to me, but she had this evil smile on her face. I don't mean to be rude, but why are you looking at me that way? Oh, only because I have a plan in mind. What plan? If I tell you, it won't be a surprise, will it? Well, all right, I guess. I just want you to know that you will regret letting me stay with you. Excuse me? Oh, yeah, I will make sure you move out of our lives. You know, I believe that my son deserves way better than you. Look, I don't care what you intend to do, but if you do anything that's out of line, I will throw you out. Ha! You can't do that. This house belongs to my son, so unless he wants me out, you can't do anything to me. I really do wish you the best of luck. I will raise hell for you. Before I could counter her and tell her that the house actually belonged to me, Ned walked in. Hannah's entire behavior shifted as soon as he did. She stopped looking like she was about to cause a huge chaos and shifted into looking like a sweet old woman. My heart was racing with thoughts about what she could do. Would she put Nair in my shampoo? Would she purposely mess with my work? Would she try to blame me for something? The worst part about all my thoughts was the fact that I knew when it came down to it, Ned wouldn't have my back. He would support his mother. I let Hannah and Ned talk for a while before deciding to go back to my room to try to fall asleep. My thoughts kept me up for a while, but I somehow managed to fall asleep. When I fell asleep, which was a couple of hours after I decided to head to bed, by the way, Ned still wasn't back. The next morning, I did a quick sweep around the house, and once I saw that everything looked normal, I left for work. When I came back, however, I saw a bunch of bags in front of the door. I parked my car in the driveway and got closer to the bags to see what was going on. When I got into the bags, I realized that it was a lot of my things packed in. I just stared at the bags in disbelief. Was this Hannah's big plan to throw me out of my own house? Did Ned know about it? Is this what they were talking about for hours last night? I looked around and saw Ned's car in the garage. That meant he was home, which also meant that there was a strong possibility that if he knew about what Hannah was doing, I was furious. I began consistently ringing the doorbell and even banged on the door to get their attention. I needed to know what the hell they thought they were doing. About two minutes into trying either Hannah or Ned to open the door, I heard shuffling from the other side. One of them was making their way over. It was Hannah, and she looked annoyed. What is your problem? Can you just let me get some sleep? These treatments are tiring. What the hell are my things doing out here? My God, are you stupid? I told you I'd kick you out of our lives. Are you being serious right now? I expected that you'd at least pack your things, but you're lazy. Where's Ned? Get him here. Does he know you're doing this? Well, yeah. It's his house, so he needed to give me the yes. He agreed to it last night. Get him here. Hannah rolled her eyes at me and yelled for Ned to come downstairs. I was seething at this point. I wanted to put both of them in their place. How dare they do this to me? 
I knew that I didn't have the best relationship with Hannah, but to kick me out of my own house? Ned knew that the house was in my name, and he still said yes. The audacity was beyond enraging. Finally, Nick came downstairs. He looked guilty, but I wanted to smack that look off of him. Ned, explain to her that you agreed to kick her out. Is she being serious? Yeah. Why? What have I done to you? You just don't treat my mother right. She told me what you said to her last night, and I just couldn't let you continue to be a part of my life. What are you talking about? When I went out of the room for a couple of minutes, you told my mom that you were going to kick her out. How could you say that when you knew what she was going through? I didn't even say that. She was the one who said it to me, I swear. Mom told me you'd try to flip it on her. Do you ever stop trying to paint my mother in a negative light? Uh, I swear, that's not the case. You're pathetic. Just get out of our lives already. What are you even going to do with the house? Oh, we're moving Stacy in. She's real family, not you. And Ned, you're on board with this? I'm Miss Stacy. She said she's willing to work things out again. Ha! Now get out! With that, Hannah slammed the door in my face. I felt broken. I couldn't believe that Ned had actually betrayed me like that. I had never once openly stated that I had a problem with his mother. Sure, I did tell him when she did or said things that rubbed me the wrong way, but I didn't think that it was enough to think that I had a vendetta against Hannah. I knew that Hannah was saying things to him behind my back. I was sure that she was the one feeding him all these thoughts about his ex and telling him that I hated her would do anything to ruin her. I hoped desperately that Ned would have at least developed some sort of brain to understand what his mother was doing, but he was blind when it came to his mother. I wanted to just collapse on the floor and sob, but I knew that Hannah would have too much fun watching me cry, so I gathered my things, loaded them into my car, and drove to my mother's place. I rarely visited her because I was usually really busy, but whenever I did visit mom, my mom and I made a lot of plans to have fun together. However, this time, when she took one look at my face, she knew that something was very, very wrong. I only took out one bag that had a bunch of my clothes in it and walked into the house. My mom just silently watched as I kept my things back in my bedroom before going to sit into the dining room. My mom walked in and poured me a glass of wine. We sat together in silence for a while before my mom broke it. Tell me, what's wrong, honey? I, I don't even know where to begin. It's okay, take your time. I'm here to listen to everything to give you all my support. Thanks, Mom. It's just, you know how I have a weird relationship with Ned's mom, right? Oh, no. What did she do? I swear, if she did anything to hurt you, well, I think she's been telling Ned a bunch of stuff about me. What do you mean? I think she's been reminding him a lot about his ex and their life before, and she must have also been telling him that I hated her and wanted her out of our lives. What the hell? Why would he do that? She's never liked me. She always thought that it was a shame that Ned and Stacy broke up. She always made it clear to me that I couldn't even hold a candle flame up to Stacy. Oh, honey, that's not true at all. If Hannah praises someone, are they really good? That's fair, but, uh, Hannah came over to stay at my place because she had to get her alopecia treated. She told me that when Ned was away for a couple of minutes that she would throw me out, and I didn't take her seriously. Cut to the day after work, I find all my things out and she tells me to leave because she's inviting Stacy, her real family, to live with them. That witch! How dare she! Did Ned say anything? <laughs> he definitely said that he agreed with Hannah. He told me that he missed Stacy. Oh my god, honey, I'm so incredibly sorry that this is happening to you. Yeah, I guess. I just feel dumb right now, Mom. But correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't that house in your name? It is, but Hannah seemed to think that it was in Ned's. This is what makes this even messed up, because Ned knows that Hannah thinks this way, and he still chooses to throw me out of my own home. Okay, you can't let this slide. I'll tell you what. My friend's husband is a locksmith. I'll call him up and we can have all the locks changed tomorrow. While that's happening, you can pack both of their things up and throw them into the driveway. You know what? Let's do it. I was sick and tired of feeling sorry for myself. I knew that if the roles were reversed, I would have never let what happened to me happen to Ned. 
If he couldn't stand up for me, even have my back, then he would get kicked out too. I was done with them walking all over my life. Over the rest of the night, my mom and I finished a whole bottle of wine. I was finally able to cry about all the events of the day. I felt bad that I was losing someone I loved so much. I cried because it was painful to know that the man that I loved didn't love me back and that I was just a rebound. By the time I went to bed, I felt lighter. I felt like I was going to be free and that made me feel excited. I took the next day off from work. I knew that Hannah would be gone for her treatments for around two hours and maybe a little more because she had some friends in our town that she would meet up with. I also knew that Ned would either be at work or he would be doing something else out of the house. My mom called her friend up and briefly explained my situation to her. Her friend's husband was thankfully free, so he came on over as fast as he could. While he got to changing the locks, I got busy with packing all of Hannah and Ned's stuff up. It was very easy to pack Hannah's stuff up because she didn't really have much to begin with. Packing Ned's stuff was hard because they all had so many memories. And I knew that with each item I packed away, I was slowly saying goodbye to him in his toxic ways. When I was finally done packing everything, I put all their belongings outside as a final move to rub salt in their wounds. I wrote them a little note that said, Now you get to be with your real family. When the locksmith was done, he handed me the new keys and left. While I hung back a little to make sure I didn't miss anything that belonged to either of them, when I saw there was nothing, I locked the house and made my way back to my mom's place. My mom and I then went out to get something to eat. An hour after I had left my house, Hannah called me. I didn't pick up the first time, but after she spammed my phone ten times, I picked up. What do you want? Who do you think you are? You can't throw us out of Ned's house. You know what? I'm so sick and tired of your antics, Hannah. Not everything revolves around you and your son. Get your head out of your butt. What does that even mean? I don't care. You just give us the keys or I will have the police involved. (laughs) Go ahead. And when the police get there, ask Ned if he has the papers of the house stating that it belongs to me. What are you talking about? Stop lying. Why would I lie? I had the house a whole four years before I married Ned. He owns nothing. Get off my property before I get back or I will get the police involved. It felt liberating to put Hannah in her place. My mom and I had a good laugh at the shock in Hannah's voice when I told her the house belonged to me. I bet she wouldn't let Ned go just like that for hiding something so big from her. I guess that should have been another red flag to me. What true man is too ashamed to tell someone that his wife owned the house and not him? Anyway, in a week that followed, I filed for divorce and had the papers delivered to Ned. Ned tried to contest the divorce, but I had made sure we signed an iron-clawed prenup, so he got nothing out of it. A few months later, I found out that Ned had lost his job because he barely went to work. That meant he couldn't keep up with the mortgage payments on Hannah's place, so they might just truly be homeless. After that, I stopped checking up on them because I was satisfied with everything that happened. I've learned to never let anyone walk all over me and to stand up for myself, but most of all, I've learned to never underestimate my worth. I won't let anyone ever make me feel any lesser than my true worth.